I have uh, deceptively young features. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to exploit them for the rest of my career. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, we are here with Sun Sounds of Arizona in Flagstaff, Arizona, and welcome to episode 16 of Untamed Shrews, Women Talk Theater, presented by the Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival. I'm Dawn. And I'm Becky. And I'm Hannah. And welcome to today's episode. Today, we have the lovely Ryan L. Jenkins with us to chat about Flag Shake's upcoming spring play, Crumbs from the Table of Joy by Lynn Nottage. But before we introduce Ryan, Shrews, what's new? <laughs> Do you like the line I wrote for you? It Becky? rhymes. <laughs> I always feel so funny writing your guys' patter. I'm like, change this if you want, please. <laughs> so lame. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Don, how are you? I'm good. I don't think I have any crazy updates. What if I'm that's just... what if that's the check-in? I'm okay. good. How and are now you? on to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I feed a baby a lot. That's yeah. all I do. <laughs> yeah, how's Mr. Blake? He's good. He's doing good. He's like reaching some big milestones. Um good. he's super small. That's all that's been like since I was pregnant with him, he's been small. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a pediatrician checkup and they were like, he's too small. And then um luckily we met with a lactation consultant who've been seeing from the beginning and she's like I don't think he's too small. I think he's just his size. Yeah. <laughs> so he's eating good and he's happy and he's meeting all his developmental milestone, milestones, but he's just a little guy. I mean, you're so, teeny. Like, yeah. you're not a huge person. So it doesn't like surprise me that he's small. Yeah, it's not a big shocker. And it was funny because she was saying, she's like, well, you know, she's been my lactation consultant from the beginning. Lactation consultants are amazing. You would think breastfeeding would be totally intuitive. It's hmm. not. Um, you need so much support and so much help and so much like, just like people like cheerleaders. Yeah. Um, so she's, she's been my lactation consultant since he was like four days old. Oh, that's great. Um, and she's like, he's always been just kind of a snacker. And I was like, Hey, me too. <laughs> that's true. Snack parfait. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like, I'd rather eat a little bit like seven times a day. And that's kind of how he is too. But, Don, um, you mentioned, um, that. Uh, she's been a, uh, your lactation consultant has been with you kind of pretty much since Blake was born. Was that something yeah. that you knew while you were pregnant you would want a lactation consultant or was that something you sought out after delivery? Yeah, no, I didn't know. And at the hospital, they always have them on hand to like help. So I met with the lactation consultant like right after he was born and then the very next day. Um, but I had no idea how excruciatingly painful breastfeeding right. is. Oh no. Um, it is really painful and it's just it's just painful at first as your nipples adjust, frankly. <laughs> um, but a lactation consultant can help it be pain a little less painful and painful for a little shorter of a time. Mm. Um, doesn't matter what you do, it's gonna hurt for a while. Which I had no idea. <laughs> Becky and I were just so, like nodding our heads. Like, okay. Yeah, it's intense. I mean, I always kind of felt like, you know, like it was an important thing to me to breastfeed when my baby was born. And I'm really grateful that I've been able to do it and have a like lactation consultant. But um, I also am 100% like, wow, you've got to do what's right for your mental health yeah. because this is a really difficult thing for your mental health. Not just like that it's painful and then that like, you know, you get all the anxiety of like, if he's small, feeling like that's your fault and, you know, all of those things. But also because like, I can't really go anywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I have to feed this baby one, two, Every three, two four, hours. five, yeah. six times a day for, he's like a long eater. A lot of babies eat for like 15 to 20 minutes. Mine is a 45 minute to an hour guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like my entire day. Um, and you never know, like you can kind of know when it's going to be, but you can't know exactly when it's going to be. Cause like, how long will he eat? How long will he nap? When will he wake up? So if you can't do it for your mental health, like, um, yeah. I'm here for those formula mommies. Like, yeah. do it. <laughs> like, well, whatever just, you gotta the do. The mom guilt in general. Like, let's let that shit go. Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. god, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. these mamas do what they need to do. Yeah. Gosh. Um, this might be 
not a question we can answer, but Dawn, because you mentioned that it is so painful, um, and it sounds like maybe that's something that goes away with time. Is that also why, like, wet nurses were a p- position, like, mm, maybe. because of that? Or uh, not necessarily because of that, but that was kind of, like, in addition to all the other, um, I guess, uh, freedoms or liberties that it afforded yeah, the wealthy women. Models, yeah. <laughs> Well, it wasn't just, so I do know the answer to this and it wasn't just wealthy women. It was also middle-class women okay. and it had far more to do with the economics. Um, they needed to be working. Uh, they needed to be working either like in a trade or in the fields, or they needed to be working and you cannot like work, work, like work with your hands, work outside of your home and breastfeed simultaneously. I mean, I'm lucky because yeah. I work from home. I'm lucky because I have a lot of support. Mm-hmm. But actually, yeah, I was really interested to learn myself that a that a big thing with midwives was, or with um, sorry, wet nurses, is they were nursing lots of babies at the same time, mm-hmm. and it oh, was really so that moms yeah. could be out doing their job. So like those women could make a job of nursing hmm. and basically just breastfeeding a baby all day. Continuing. Wow. <laughs> and then wow. the moms, you know, of those babies could continue to do the work that they needed to do to provide for their families. So hmm. yeah, I just can't imagine. I I've tried to imagine yeah, his little hands <laughs> yeah. like up in the screen. Reach Grabbing it. your brain. Yeah, I've tried to imagine and I can't imagine. But yeah. oh. that's what I've heard. So wow. The things you learn on Untamed Shrews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you haven't, you guys haven't heard it yet, but we recorded last month with Austin Titchener of Reduce Shakespeare, and we talked a lot about uh, <laughs> breastfeeding, uh, which is kind of funny. We kind of got, we got silly. We we recorded with Austin last month, but then we were like, oh, no, we need to do a Crumbs episode. So this is our Crumbs episode, but you'll hear Austin next month. Um, but yeah. Um, you mentioned, uh, I'm just going to now check myself in. You mentioned uh, mental health. And I just wanted to say thank you, everybody. I got like texts after my check in last month of people being like, I'm so glad that you're like being honest and like I'm going through that too. So, like, holy heck, guys, everyone's amazing. Thank you for checking in if you, you know, checked in on me because it has been a very crazy, you know, few months for me um but everything is so much better my family's doing really well and um yeah settling back in and I will say now that the sun is coming back out I can just feel myself returning (laughs) to my body like it's just I cannot wait for spring Easter is this weekend I'm just I'm so excited it's it's beautiful out and actually Yay. today it's kind of gross yeah but <laughs> well and when this podcast airs today will be Easter it will be, yes happy <laughs> Easter everybody yeah hopefully we're, we're getting together on Easter so hopefully some cute uh shrew pics will come out <laughs> after Easter us in our Easter dresses and Blake all dressed up oh ah. yeah he has an outfit he He's does Oh, I'm so excited. As long as he doesn't pee or puke on it when we get there, <laughs> he's going to look dapper. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Okay. And Bax? Um, I am now an official Arizona resident. Yay! I have switched over the things that I needed to switch over. Oh, so official. <laughs> yeah. So. That was like a long process, too. You had, yeah. I mean, I remember when it's, it's so frustrating. I just feel like... They tell you some things, and I feel like some things on the website could be just a little bit more, like, laid out for a person who has literally no idea what they're doing, (laughs) a.k.a. me. (laughs) Cater to me, please. Please. Um, But, yeah, so that was exciting. There was a moment where, I don't know, I felt like I was expecting some big, like, wow, like, like Mm -hmm. I did an adult thing. and But it was just like, no, like, I did an adult thing. Yes. (laughs) Every time I do an adult thing, I just like take a picture of it on it's like put it on my Instagram story. And I'm like, I did it. Like I bought tires today. Praise me for it. Yeah. yeah. I shopped around for car insurance, yeah. which I'm proud of myself for totally. doing. Usually I would just stick with what I uh, already did, but I didn't like the number that they gave me. So I shopped Ugh. around for cheaper. Heck yeah. <laughs> do not accept that high number, Becky. No. God, you know, yeah, it's so funny. Like getting an, there's like nothing that makes you feel better than like getting an oil change. You're like, ah, I'm so good at life. (laughs) I'm healthy. My car is healthy. Yeah, (laughs) totally. I love it. 
Ah, oh, adulting. So good. Well, I'm super excited for Easter, but any Passover plans for the weekend? Um, none as of yet. The first, the two seders are Friday night and Saturday night. Um, yeah. No plans You gonna throw yet. one? <laughs> no, I thought about it. Um, I don't know, because so much of it, of the, like the seder is, I don't know, it just feels very like religious. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not, because I guess it is, like, more cultural, but I didn't want to, like, I don't know, like, host a religious thing mm. for people who are not religious. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's me in my own head. I get you. Yeah. No, I understand, because, yeah. like, I'm throwing an Easter party, and, like, I'm religious, but not everyone there is going to be, like, yeah. celebrating Easter in the same way I am. Yeah. But, I mean, people, you know, we all want to support each other, so, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. But I totally get you. I feel like, because um, wouldn't there be, like processes that you would need to do so it's just kind of like there's just like cumbersome there's a lot of prayers like that's the dinner is like you go through the dinner by way of all of these prayers right (laughs) and it's like very regimented yeah Yeah. well so seder literally means order Mm, so it's like there's the order to this dinner gotcha yeah so well yeah (laughs) happy is happy passover the right thing to say i think so (laughs) okay yeah happy passover happy easter (laughs) Easter, whatever you celebrate um it was great to check in and um now we're gonna introduce ryan on to ryan hello ryan welcome to untamed shrews Uh, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself your hyphens anything you want to tell them Sure, absolutely. (laughs) Hello, everyone. This is Ryan L. Jenkins. I am an actress, model, uh, Capri Sun, Virgo Moon, (laughs) Leo Rising, uh, for everyone who's into astrology. Uh, I am in the upcoming Flag Shakes production of Crumbs from the Table of Joy. I'll be playing Mm -hmm. Ermina. I hail from the windy city of Chicago, which I don't think is as windy as it's been here. <laughs> oh my gosh, today it's been the worst. Yeah. It, it's been rough. And um, yeah, went to theater at the University of Illinois, graduated in 2014, and came out here to Arizona in 2015. Ended up in the desert. <laughs> oh, I, and I love it here when it's not cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you, what was your uh, thought process or choice or decision making mm-hmm. to come? To Arizona. It involved a man. Uh, oh, oh, so. sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, that's that's the story. Uh, he told me it didn't snow out here. And I was like. And I believed it. <laughs> all I, I'll figure out the rest. I will figure out the rest. Just, just let me come yeah. with you. And he did. So, uh, mm-hmm. and it's been wonderful um, meeting people and getting to know the theater industry out here. Uh, getting to do Shakespeare and everything else. Heck yeah. 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 Um, for those out there who have seen a lot of Flag Shakes productions, you will have seen Ryan in a lot of shows. We've worked with you for years. Um, let's see. What shows have you done with us? I have done Mackers. Is it okay? Do, yeah. Is that okay to say? Do, yeah. I, do I get oh, to say the no, full name? Here? <laughs> uh, we're technically yeah. not in a theater, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pick your poison. You have. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, I did Macbeth. <laughs> Um, I was the <laughs> third witch and various other characters in that. Um, the following summer was Taming of the Shrew. Mm-hmm. I was Catherine. Yes. Uh, and the then, OG Flag Shakes Shrew, everybody. Yes. <laughs> oh, <she knows>. uh, <laughs> 2019 was Much Ado. Yeah. I was Ursula, Third Watch, and Sexton. And then uh, 2020 um, was the <laughs> virtual production of As You Like It. Uh, and I was Orlando. We got our lovers in the house tonight. Yeah. You've Hi. been reunited. It's been so long. Ross in Orlando. <laughs> and now it's not virtual. It's <laughs> we still got headphones around. and microphones, yeah, That's true. <laughs> Wait, you guys have met each other in person, right? I mean, in 2019, I think. Okay, But yes. it was probably in passing Very with quick. Duchess and oh, Much Ado. Gotcha. Not like a... Totally. Not yeah. super 100% right. official. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> which well, is welcome. similar to a couple of times. I mean, even with some of my castmates in Crumbs. Yeah. Um, I've been on stage in the same show with Raquel, and we've never actually gotten no to say anything to each other. No way. Gotcha. <laughs> I was like, no, you know Raquel. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I know Raquel. I know. People think we are the same person. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's so funny. 
Yeah. Oh, well, welcome. Yay, I'm so, so glad excited. you're here. I'm also so glad that uh, you're in Crumbs. It's an incredible production. Like, it's such a dream team. Um, and yeah, this is our Crumbs episode. So we're here to chat about Crumbs today and hopefully get some of those listeners out there who are local to Flagstaff or to Arizona. Hopefully excited to see the show. It will run from May 5th to the 15th at the Coconino Center for the Arts. And tickets are already on sale and with when this goes live on Easter Sunday actually um, May 17th will only be a couple weeks away so wow. yay. yay so you yeah. already told us who you were playing in crumbs um, but can you just tell us like a little bit about the play so that our listeners know a little bit more about what the show is about Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> there's it's so, a lot at once yes there's so much that happens yeah. um, it's a lovely play about uh, an American family a black American family um, there is a father Godfrey Crump and his two teenage daughters Ernestine and Ermina um, the mother, the matriarch of the family re- has recently passed away as we're starting the story um, they lived I believe in I want to say Florida Florida yeah Mm -hmm. Um, And they have since moved uh, to Brooklyn. So there is this huge transition (laughs) of life in the north in the 1950s. We are just on the cusp of Jim Crow and all of that wonderful, (laughs) interesting stuff developing. Gritted Um, teeth. Yes, very gritted. And... Uh, you know, a family trying to heal and also trying to mourn uh, and still finding their own respective paths Mm -hmm. in a time and a place where they are constantly being told that they don't have one. Mm. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. it's it has so many like, you know, some play, you know, most plays, they have one hard hitting subject and crumbs just has them all (laughs) religion, politics, race, like it's just one heavy hit after another. But it's also a hilarious play. You know, it it has its moments of of levity, Um, too, like and highly stylized, like moments of of silliness. Yes, there are a lot of points in the play, um, which is predominantly narrated and told through the lens of Ernestine's journey, where um, she gives you insight into how she wishes the moment had transpired or Mm. had ended or if there was closure. And there is a little bit of theatricality in there (laughs) that's always so wonderful. And I think it's something that we all do, even when we're reflecting on moments in our own lives, when we're like, oh, I wish that kiss had maybe gone this way. (laughs) Or, you know, if they had, you know, given a wave as they walked out of my life or something Mm. like that, you know, not to be too melodramatic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, or like a a conversation that you had and you leave it and an hour later, you're like, oh, I should have said that. Should have said that one thing that went this way. (laughs) Or I've had even instances during conversations where like I'll be in public and then a song will come on the radio (laughs) <laughs> and it is like literally commenting right. on the situation <laughs> as it's happening and I'm like okay this is good sound my, design my life my life my life is a sitcom it's yes. great god is an incredible sound designer <laughs> that's so silly yeah. like skip this also Alexa, is... skip song <laughs> what's the up play has a lot I remember um I saw it a long time ago but I remember just you know like Ernestine's journey too is a lot about um female empowerment also because she graduates from high school and that's a really big deal in her family and it's kind of like this like I I'd love to I loved if there was a crumbs from the table of joy too like <laughs> so we could see what happens to Ernestine after the play because she seems poised for so much and is such an interesting character and um, your character Ermina too I mean she's only 15 yeah. Which I'd love to talk about. You had you did a silly Instagram post the oh, other day. Yes. It was like turns thirty, gets cast to play a fifteen year old. <laughs> uh, yes, that is that is true. I have uh, deceptively young features. Uh, I'm hoping to exploit them for the rest of my career. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. you um, have to. I'm going to try. I feel like this is my first foray into that. Um, <laughs> like I said, Raquel and I uh, have been confused for each other in different context context <laughs> um so to be playing sisters yes is hilarious i also have 
a baby sister named mm. Raquel. No so, way. Yes. No way. Yes. I feel like, yes. how did I not know that? I feel like we've talked about the fact that you and Raquel either. get, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I'm that's like, so I silly. have a sister. It's not that. There's <laughs> Raquel and there's Raquel. Like, there's uh-huh. oh, a gotcha. difference. Yeah. Oh, um, that's silly. And so for me, making that switch between being the eldest child in my in my mm. family, um, and I'm like, what is, do, I, do I even know what it's like to be a younger sister? And I just immediately turn and just look at how I've watched my own sister grow mm. up, and I'm like, I, I have this. I got I, it. There, yeah. There's there's things I can do here. Um, mm. So she is very uh, fun. Um, she speaks her mind, Aww. definitely. Uh, she speaks up and wants to be heard as the baby of the family. Mm-hmm. She very much, when she has something to say, it's like, <laughs> well, I don't like that at all. And there's very little filter. Um, <laughs> what, what's what been coming up for me in the moment reading through the script, I'm like, oh, I don't know how many people are familiar with the show, what's happening. But there's um, a baby sister and that show uh, her name is D, and she had all of like the quips and the one-liners, and just getting on her brother's nerves. And she's the one that had to be watched all the time. Uh, and so I see that lovely like power and dynamic and inspiration. I'm like, I'm so ready. Wait, to what do script this. is this? Uh, no, it's a show. Oh, it was show. a sitcom back in the '70s. <laughs> I don't gotcha. Know. Like, oh. I used to watch it as a kid, but what's happening for all those people? Oh, it's oh, called God. What's Happening. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I was so lost. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, how has it been going? How's how's rehearsal? Um, I mean, like I said, you guys are a dream team, and uh, it seems like you guys have just been having a <laughs> flipping blast. <laughs> like Yes. Um, everybody is uh, incredibly talented. Like I said, I've worked or at least I've been on stage with Raquel and I've like, you know, been adjacent to uh, a lot of her work. Um, I've worked with Raphael Hamilton um, on one other show several years ago. Okay. Um, and La uh, Rivers, this is my first time working with her and uh, just her energy mm. uh, in the room, her questions and how she's approaching the character Lily has been almost a master class to oh, watch um, it's so good and um, oh, I'm jealous and Audrey who is playing Goethe uh, we worked together also in as you like it oh, yeah. so um, this is our first time working together in the room good. and you are absolutely right even the director uh, Bray has just been I, I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to no. be doing the show with like I walked in and I was just okay. like I'm so happy like I'm still an actor who gets like really excited <laughs> to be like in the room like oh my god they picked me in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ryan we will keep picking you, you, keep picking you. <laughs> we will pick you forever oh that's amazing I'm so glad yeah when when we when Raquel so everyone we've been referring to Raquel who ev- everyone has met Raquel was on I'm gonna do it again episode four <laughs> it wasn't episode four, question but whenever it's a question, whenever it's an episode that came before this one, it was probably episode four. Okay. Anyway, Raquel was uh, on an episode earlier about uh, multi hyphenate artists, and Raquel is also our equality and casting director. For those of you who don't know, she's amazing. So that's who we keep referring to. Yes. Um, but yeah, when Raquel like finished casting, we were just like, oh my gosh, we did it! Like we sent out all of our like our first goes and we're like wait it's stuck that was that was how did that happen like <laughs> it was really great it was awesome yeah and I guess how fortunate um or well not fortunate that the crumbs from the table of joy was meant to be in the 2020 mm, season true. I think but then from the pandemic and all the other just things um getting it pushed to the 2022 season and you know like there's a moment in time and like this is the moment in time and being able to bring everyone and having that like mm-hmm. fantastic rehearsal experience. I don't know. There's something that I guess can be said. Yes. You know, absolutely. Yeah. I'm like yeah. crumbs are always around. <laughs> As she holds her tummy. Before we started recording, we kept making crumb puns. Ryan was like, I just love all crumbs. Crumb, crumbs are amazing. I'm a crumbs gal. <laughs> so silly. Um, I'm actually curious, Becky, you've mm-hmm. been in the show before and you played mm-hmm. Goethe. What yes. was your experience with the show? Yeah. So I played Goethe, um, 
Uh, it was a virtual production in 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, it was a kind of like an expedited rehearsal process um, meant for recording that never actually made it to to stream, unfortunately. Oh, really? Yeah, I no, didn't it didn't. Know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Shoot. it's such a. It was such a, like I just felt so lucky to have been in those rehearsal rooms mm. or the Zoom rooms or whatever, mm. um, and to really be able to just listen and watch and absorb and, yeah, 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 totally. I don't know. That's not. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Maybe that's not as profound as I wanted it to no, be. No, that's but, great. No, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, I have a. The reason I chose this show is um, I saw it maybe like almost 20 years ago guys no way. <laughs> wow. definitely the oldest person in the room <laughs> um, but i saw it at a college theater competition when i was in college so not quite 20 years ago but um and it was amazing i was all college students who performed it so it wasn't even like a professional production and it was near uh, your hometown ryan we have more overlap than i realized because i went to I lived for a long time in Wisconsin, and then I went to undergrad at the University of Whitewater, and our, like, regional, you know, like, college theater competitions were always in, oh, man, some place in Illinois. It was not Chicago, <laughs> but it was, like, maybe Champaign. yeah, it'll come to me. We'll see. And we would go down, so we went down, and one of the colleges, like, they had brought this production of Crumbs from the Table of Joy, and it's the only time I've experienced a completely like unanimous and instantaneous uh, standing ovation mm. so i remember ernestine said her final lines and the lights went down and the whole auditorium was dead quiet and then the lights came back up for bows and everyone stood at the exact same moment and started clapping and That's i was like i have lines. never wow. witnessed that before or since um you know like at any play i've ever been it's always like one guy starts it and everything else right, kind of like yeah. has to join in or like and sometimes people like are those, like i guess yeah yeah, yeah you're like, like those people bit. in the back yeah. who are like yeah. well i'm gonna stand but i'm gonna pick up my purse while i'm doing it because i'm not committing <laughs> to a standing ovation <laughs> but um but yeah it was just an instantaneous like an amazing and such an amazing story and show and like the feeling of it stuck with me for all of that time and so um we were looking for something to do for our 2020 spring show we were trying to do a small actor driven piece which i memory play certainly um i was like we had to do crumbs from the table of joy and i was so bummed when we had to push it twice but yeah. i think that second time we pushed it um we could have done it in spring of 2021, but we just knew it wouldn't get the audience it deserved quite yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people were still feeling a little too reluctant and a little too, you know, um, just we things were so we're just brand new for vaccines and stuff like that. Yeah. So we weren't really in the place we're in now where it feels like we can safely get back out there and see theater. So right. I'm so excited to see it again. And I'm, I'm with Hannah on the dream team thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just cannot believe that we got all of you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I'm yeah. just excited to see it and I'm excited to have audiences see it. Uh, speaking of what can, what can audiences expect from this play? Um, anything they should know before they come to see it? Ooh, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, so many things. I, I, <laughs> oh, let me get started on this list. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm not, not, not to present a list. But, uh, <laughs> like we t kind of touched on earlier, there are certain historical contexts that I think are important to, um, familiarize yourself with just a little bit before coming in to this kind of show um and uh family really really think about uh how you interact with your family uh what family means to you um even if you've got uh you know family sitcoms that are near and dear to your heart and how those family dynamics are uh, i feel like a lot of that um is at play here uh, and I think also going back to what you both touched on earlier about the um, power uh, and the agency of women um, 
women, especially in the 50s, and then black women, that mm-hmm. intersectionality of that on top of everything, um, definitely is, is something that uh, I invite everyone to uh, have an open mind to uh, experience in this show. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I also did a lot of research for, because um, I'm working on the props for this show. <laughs> I'll bring it up. Um, I did a little deep dive, dive on Father Divine. And if anyone's interested too in that sort of Ooh. like 1950s radio um, evangelizing, yeah. uh, Father Divine is a fascinating character. And I think he plays his presence plays a huge role in the play. He's not in the play. <laughs> yeah. But the reason that I was researching him for props is he's literally on the wall. Like, <laughs> yes. He has on the wall, yeah. a photo of him. He is very um, much. There's the... a really interesting parallel in the play between Father Divine, who marries a white woman, and Godfrey, who in the middle of the play, huge spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not something similar <laughs> um so i loved i loved like reaching into that too and kind of like looking at the character of father divine and not just father divine but that that kind of entire era of radio evangelical mm-hmm. um uh preaching and like what people were taking from it. And it's very interesting. So if if audiences want to like have a little bit going in, look up Father Divine. Um, At one point, Godfrey gets a letter from him and I was able to like find an actual letter from Father Divine. There are several out there. So you can like read the kinds of letters he was writing to people who were his, you know, kind of uh, acolytes or however you want to call it. And um, just like Hannah was saying, like this play manages to bring in so many interesting topics. Um, The, the white woman who's in it is German in 1950 America. Yeah. So that adds a whole nother layer of, you know, um, uh, just like interesting socio-political yeah, like working dynamics, and climate yeah. to the show. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this play and you could get as nerdy as you wanted to about it. <laughs> or I like Ryan's idea, just watch some family sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you can know, go either direction. <laughs> as a religious person, when I first read the play, I was like, oh no, am I like not going to like this play? Um, but, uh, you know, it, it televangelists, evangelists in general are a fascinating fascinating part of our culture and I feel like they're starting I mean we don't really have I don't feel like we have necessarily like that televangelist like phenomena necessarily anymore but yeah it's such a fascinating thing and um it's so interesting you know people find comfort in certain things and Godfrey really latches on you know he's you know going through grief and he latches on to this person you know he moves across the country for this person who he doesn't know and you know he he basically makes father divine god you know um and it's yeah it's it's super fascinating and when you were mentioning um you know like all the girls to stuff just a line that stuck out to me was uh, of course I'm gonna botch it completely but there was there's a line about Gerda where they're like oh um, well you were the enemy only a few years ago and now like no one cares or something like that I, I can't remember what do you maybe Ryan since you're actively was, in the show that was pretty close did I do it okay <laughs> honestly okay yes. I just thought that was a fascinating line because you brought up, you know, like we're post, uh, you know, Nazi Germany and now she's moving to America. And yeah, just a just so many fascinating, interesting facets of this play that all intersect at once. And it's it's kind of hard. It's kind of a hard play to explain. There's a lot going on. Right. And there's even yeah. something mm-hmm. about the Godfrey father divine storyline mm-hmm. uh, that reads very Waiting for Godot not to me. <laughs> um, waiting for him to answer his yes, letter. He or, just or, never comes. I, I mean, and there is a point where they're hoping to meet him in person, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, they even go they to the event there's, there's and he doesn't event. come. So, yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. A tragedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it just gives me, for me, reading it yeah, in that. Hmm. It, I was just like, oh, this feels so familiar because I've, you know, read Godot couple times now <laughs> i love that parallel ryan yeah. it's really fascinating so. <laughs> and just you know just the antics 
of that even and and that play for some having so many different philosophical and like religious um implications or connotations to it uh as well Hmm. and and just the concept of faith sometimes where you you there is almost never a guarantee that you're going to see or meet or reach you know the divine or nirvana or (laughs) insert your own religious doctrine yeah well that's basically the definition of faith (laughs) you know you will never be able to prove it you will never be able to hold it reach it touch it it's beyond the like like us as humans want to be able to figure it out and we just can't that's what faith is you know and and knowing just how much um certain groups throughout history have had to Mm. lean on that sort of um, you know, agency, I would say, yeah. uh, in order to get through some of the experiences they've had, mm-hmm. it's, it's just one extra layer. Like right. every time you think about it, it's like, oh, and then you yeah. put, you know, where they're coming from and where they are now mm. and what they're still experiencing, you know, here in Brooklyn that, you know, you, th- you think, oh, that's just, a, that's just down in the South where they do mm. that. And it's like, mm, no. no. <laughs> yeah. No, some yeah. of this is everywhere. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's a lot of how I read the whole Father Divine piece of it too, is that he provides the hope that Godfrey needs. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's very interesting because yeah, I you know, there's a lot of feelings about televangelists, there's a lot of feelings about how it becomes kind of a capitalist machine. But, you know, to me with with Godfrey, what I saw is this man who desperately needed hope. Mm-hmm who felt rather trampled on and father divine sort of provided an answer to both of those things. You know, it was like, here was the hope he needed. And also here was a very well-respected black man. Yes. And so those two things together kind of provide this sort of like port in the storm for Godfrey, Mm -hmm. um, which eventually he has to give up and he has to let his family be that, (laughs) which I think is a lot with the play deals with is like, you know, Lily coming in and Goethe coming in and, and Ernestine growing up and like him needing to find that in his family and the people around him, unless, unless with this sort of remote character. But I think that, you know, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong with it or there's not, you know, there's, there's no judgment on that kind of thing. People need to find hope. Um, and yeah. you know, we can't judge how or where they find that hope. That's not, that's right. not for us to do. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. Um, you touched on something, Ryan, that made me want to talk about Lynn Nottage a little bit. Uh, you mentioned the play itself. And um, I mean, Lynn Nottage, a prolific, you know, prolific playwright. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the, the other show that I am most familiar with of hers is Intimate Apparel. Um, but I don't actually know Lynn Nottage super well. What... What are your, like, are you um, a super fan of Lynn Nottage? What's <laughs> I am still also learning mm-hmm. as I go. Um, Ruined, I think, was mm. very, very popular um, when I was an undergrad. I remember reading it. Uh, I think that came out in about 2009. Ooh, that do one. Do I know that one? Oh. <laughs> Racking my brain. Right. Yeah. Maybe I do. It's not set in America. Um, okay. I want to say it's. Um, African in origin. Okay, okay. Um, I don't think I, I know can't it. pick like the anyway. exact city off the top of my head right now. So sorry, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Lynn. Um, but I would, I, I would recommend like all of her, all of her yeah. works. Um, mm-hmm. Just as we're getting into uh, contemporary playwrights, um, right. black female playwrights. Um, I think we can all continue to incorporate those in mm-hmm. our reading lists and mm-hmm. repertoires and theaters and seasons. Yes. Um, not to get on the soapbox. We're calling you out. <laughs> yeah, on the <laughs> calling <laughs> ourselves out too. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> I know and, another one we thought about um, uh, we thought about doing was Sweat, which is a mm-hmm. Lynn Nottage play. Yes. Mm-hmm. I believe um, and my... I can't remember why I think we chose, honestly, we chose um, Crumbs from the Table of Joy over Sweat. Uh, 
because crumbs has more female characters mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so we were like well this one has a lot more women so we'll do this one but i know sweat was another one we considered which is i think her most recent play right i believe my alma mater is actually putting it on oh, um that's awesome. soon in the coming months i think i just saw a notice for that I was like, ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think she's also, I think she was either on the book or the librettist for the MJ musical oh, that's on Broadway right now. Yeah, yeah. cool. That sounds familiar, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So. And um, this play specifically was written in 95, right? Am I yes. quoting it's, that correctly? It's one of her earliest, yeah. if not the earliest, uh, work of hers. Right, that's yeah. awesome. Oh my gosh, baby Blake just arrived. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> what are your uh, thoughts on crumbs? Yeah, Blake, tell us what you think. What do you think of crumbs? Would you give us a coup? Or... Oh, I was hoping he would. Uh, <laughs> shoot. No comment, he says. This would no be comment. his first podcast ever. Actually, Blake's been on a few podcasts. You just didn't yeah. hear him. <laughs> That's I've, amazing. Uh, I've nursed during a couple of podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> um awesome well um we're getting a little low on time is there anything else we want to discuss about crumbs or about ermina the character about lynn um or yeah just anything that we want to wrap it up with um i will say it is still um very new and exciting to be getting back into Mm -hmm. onstage productions. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done maybe two other shows now um, since we've kind of opened things back up. Um, One of which was still predominantly like virtual rehearsals Mm -hmm. um, before we opened. And just being in a room with other creatives uh is something that i've always loved it was very very dear and dear to my heart i missed it terribly Mm -hmm. (laughs) um these last couple of years and so to be back um i i feel terribly terribly happy maybe a little selfish um (laughs) with the experience um and also like very very glad to to be with such wonderful people to be back with flag shakes as well Right. Um, this is the second show I've done within the last 12 months um, where I'm playing a daughter, <laughs> um, which is interesting, um, <laughs> specifically father, with a father-daughter father, dynamic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't mean to cut you off. Didn't it, Had you mentioned where... Oh, I thought, wow, all the thoughts are like <laughs> streaming through my brain and I can't get them out. Um, was it... You had posted something where the man who played your father in the last show that you did actually knew your father or was the same name or there was some really yes. strong connection. Um, they went to grade school together Aww. in, in <laughs> Chicago. Um, That's and, you know, they graduated like this. The school that we all went to um, was <laughs> kindergarten through eighth. So you have your eighth grade graduation and you go off to respective high schools. Yeah. And that's what they did. Uh, never kept in touch or anything after that. Wow. So you fast forward 30 years <laughs> later <laughs> and this man is in Arizona doing a show um, that he initially was going to turn down. He wasn't going to do it. Wow. Uh, and I walk in the room and we are we all start talking, you know, getting to know each other because it's been like, you know, yeah. we're, in a, we're in a show, we're yeah. on, you know, about to hit stage and whatnot and get to know each other. And he mentions he's from Chicago and he mentions, you know, these locations that I know really well. I'm like, oh, my grandmother's house is just up the street from there. And he's like, no way. Who's, <laughs> who's your grandmother? And I'm like, well, her name's Barbara. And, you know, and he's like, and who are her kids? And I'm like, she had two sons. And I, you know, give the names, and he's like, I, I knew your dad. That's awesome. And That's crazy. so chills, just <laughs> terrifying, just chills. And you know, the world is strangely small. It yeah. is it so big, really but it is, is so, so dang small. And getting yeah. smaller every day with I technology, know. for I sure. Know. Yes. Um, and, All right, so yeah. because we always want to bring you back here, Ryan, <laughs> over and over again, what's what's your dream role what Ooh. what do you want to do now what's after crumbs dawn is asking the hard you could do questions. anything what would it be <laughs> anything oh, and then this. if you see this in the 2024 season this is not nepotism at all <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. i mean oh it'd be so awesome if 2024 were a thing uh, uh i 
am a flaming pile of Hamel trash. So, um, so Hamilton is always the first answer. Uh-huh. Uh, Hamilton, anything in Hamilton, make me the turntable. I don't care. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I am playing uh, the turntable. <laughs> this is my audition for the turntable. The turntable. Uh, if, if we're keeping on brand, uh, Antony and Cleopatra Ooh. is uh, something that I would like to do. Uh, I, I did that for Window Shakes. I was going to say, you I'm, killed it. I might yes. use that as my audition tape. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, from here, uh, I have always loved um, like voice acting and motion capture and all of those Ooh. sorts of things. So I want to be in video games and cartoons and <gasps> stuff like that. And <laughs> Wait, that's so cool. You put me on a podcast where there's a microphone here, and now I'm like... <laughs> 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 I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm going to use some smile. of this for my demo reel, you know. Yes, heck yes. Oh, I love it. Good question, Don. Good Thank question. Thank you so much for that question. Oh, well, Ryan, we love you so much. Um, we want to keep bringing you back forevers and evers. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you over the years. Um, I think we are out of time, but it was so lovely to chat about crumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to everyone listening, and I can't wait to see you all here to experience the joy and the crumbs with us. <laughs> yes, get your tickets. <laughs> How can people find you? Find me. Yes. Um, <laughs> mostly Instagram. Uh, okay. That is at Ryan L. Jenkins. Um, sometimes I'm on the Facebook. <laughs> uh, I stay away from Twitter. And I'm still figuring out the clock act app that is TikTok. Oh, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> they call it the clock app the clock. sometimes. The, clock. Yeah. Uh, the cool youngins call it the <laughs> clock app. I am so behind. Yeah. So primarily uh, Instagram and uh, a few a few theaters in the valley. You know, Fly, Flag Shake, Southwest Shakespeare, uh, Stray Cat every now and again. Nice. Do yeah. you have a website? I'm still working on oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. I get you. <laughs> it's always on my to-do I've list. I've got the domain name and the templates. Oh, good. Are, oh, step you know. one. Yeah, step one. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep an eye out for Ryan's <laughs> website in however many years. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Ryan. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you all for listening to this month's episode of Untamed Shrews. I'm Becky. And I'm Hannah. And I'm Dawn. Join us next month for an episode with Austin Titchener of the Reduced Shakespeare Company. We got our months a little mixed up. We recorded and then recorded. And anyway, you'll hear whatever happens next month. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to join the Shrew crew, follow Untamed Shrews on our Instagram at Untamed Shrews Podcast and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival. All episodes of Untamed Shrews can be found on sunsounds.org, the Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. Please subscribe, leave us a review, or put us in your Instagram stories. This episode of Untamed Shrews starring Don Tucker, Becker... Becker or Richter. <laughs> Leave it in. Sharon, Don Tucker, and Rune Er Jinkers. I'm just kidding. Don Tucker, Becky Zeritsky, Hannah Fonts, and Ryan L. Jenkins. Show art by Calliope Lou Decker. Podcast theme song by Curtin Schlurm. Hi, Cadence. Hi, Cadence. Cadence is on tour right now. Bye, Cadence. Podcast produced and edited by me, Hannah Fonts. Presented by Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival and recorded with Sun Sounds Arizona. Special thanks to our audio engineer, Gina Byers. Gina Byers. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>